Hey people of the YouTube, so as you know, I made a video about cockroaches and why I don't like them. You should go check that out, maybe. And that got me thinking about when my fear first started developing, and it all points back to an episode of Stargate. Absolutely horrific, I will never watch it, ever. Then I started having some real whack memories about all the weird crap I used to be obsessed with as a kid, which brought me to the gem I'm going to talk about today. Willie the Sparrow. No one I know has seen this, and the memory I have of it growing up is that it used to be on a weird colorful VHS tape. Sadly, I would watch this movie way too much to the point it sickened my siblings to have to watch it, and they all hate it. That and the Bee movie, but we don't go there. So I decided to rewatch it and see if I still like it, and if the rock-solid plot it had still holds up in my adult mind. Also, a side note, I found the entire movie on YouTube with no ads, so if that says anything about how weird and janky the film is, then boy howdy are we in for a ride. We open on one of these Indian tomb-like things, and there is an explorer shooting a laser at tigers. As you do. But then we continue watching, and we find our main protagonist is just using his imagination to pretend he's an explorer, and he's shooting his cat Sissy with a water gun. How come my imagination isn't as cool as his? As a kid growing up, movies and shows always portrayed imaginations as these crazy things, where the moment you think of doing something, you're doing it. But I can never do that. I always thought I had, like, a broken imagination. Maybe I was just super vanilla. We find out that Willie was sick the day before, and his mom is making him stay home an extra day just to be sure he's not sick anymore. So he's just messing around and getting into all sorts of shenanigans. Side note, the mother is nowhere to be seen. We occasionally hear her voice, but we never actually see her. So any type of parental voice is heard by the younger sister, who stuffs her cat into the dryer to dry her off. As you do. Please don't do this. Then we see him take a fully loaded gun and point it dangerously close to an old lady feeding some sparrows in a park. And I think he shoots one? It's never really made clear what happens. There's just a lot of fast cuts and anime glass flashing. You know, when their glasses turn white even though you should still, you know, be able to see behind their glasses. You know, like that. All we know is this old lady is pissed. So now this movie is turned into an anti-gun PSA, and this old lady is on her way to fight. And in the very next scene, we see the old lady in Willie's bedroom giving him a hard stare down. Now, I don't know about you, but when a random woman walks into my room, the first thing I'd be doing is dialing 911 or calling for my mom, because she is probably just as scary as the police. They argue for a bit, and Willie is convinced she's from the school. But then she tells him she is the guardian of the sparrows. I happen to be a sparrow guardian. Yeah, I'm not making this up. Just hang in there with me. She introduces herself as Sparina. Wait. Sparina. Sparrow. Sparina. Sparrow. Anyway, she tells Willie that the sparrows have a hard enough life without him shooting at them. Willie acts like one of those smart aleck know-it-all kids nobody likes, and out of spite. Now just try and follow me with this, guys. Sparina sprays him with magical hairspray and turns him into a sparrow. Yeah, she's doing some real damage to the ozone with all that spraying, I'll tell you what. But she runs out of spray and Willie can't fly. I'm just as confused as you are. So Sparina tells him to wait, and she goes to get more magical hairspray. She accidentally leaves Willie's door open, and Sissy the cat comes back with intentions to kill. She's probably just pissed at the fact that she's named Sissy. Willie's sister finds them scuffling around, and she puts Willie outside the windowsill. Sissy then makes her way outside and tries to eat Willie, but instead of getting eaten, he jumps off the ledge. As you do. And dies. Just kidding. He somehow falls into the trees across the street and in the park where he meets some sparrow friends. Red, Seeper, and this little guy we never get introduced to, so we're just gonna call him Blue. Meanwhile, Sissy is still trying to kill Willie. They all grab Willie and fly to Seeper's house, or nest, away from Sissy, where Willie explains to Seeper that he's actually a human in a sparrow's body. And Seeper finds it impossible for this to be true until he gets Willie to prove he can read. Because the only way you can tell if a human was a sparrow in this world is if a sparrow can read. Never mind the fact that the sparrow could just be lying. You're not a human in a sparrow's body. If you were a human, you could read this. Um, uh, the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell? Wow! Seeper agrees to help Willie learn how to fly if Willie teaches Seeper how to read. They touch beaks. 
which is like a pinky promise to sparrows. I'll just let that sink in for ya. We cut back to the park where the old lady Sparina is talking to Sissy and says that if she doesn't tell her where Willie is, she's going to tell the Queen of Cats on Sissy. As you do. Oops. So what's it worth to you, hmm? Maybe I won't call my good friend the Queen of Cats. If she knew that you backed out on a deal, it could be trouble. And this is where we find out that there is some kind of test that Willie is supposed to be enduring as the movie progresses. But so far, the only test that's been presented is that life is hard and everyone hates you if you're a sparrow. They mention it a few times, but it doesn't get elaborated more than the fact that there is a test of some sort. Moving on, we have the most prime comedy that is, I guess, supposed to be presented to us that Sparina is really magical. She basically just walks over an open manhole and doesn't run into a pole. Just watch. We also find out that sparrows are discriminatory against other sparrows who know how to read. Seeper? What? Why do you keep your papers hidden? Oh, quiet! Watch! Oh. Sparrows are not like humans. Sometimes they don't like sparrows that are different from the others. They send them away. Alright, now we're back with Willie and Seeper, and Seeper goes to collect some food for the two of them and gives Willie special instructions not to leave the flying area while he's gone. And just as Seeper leaves, Willie does too. Well, on his rampage, Willie meets back up with Red, Blue, and a couple of other sparrows who all absolutely thirst for him. Everyone, this is Willie. He's cute. <laughs> also, a side note, these sparrows all roast their friend Tubby. Like, dude, sparrows are mean. Hey, I'm hungry. Tubby, that is so like you. Yeah, all you ever think of is food. Pinch his ears. That makes me hungry. Food, food, food. Tubby, you're too big as it is. Who, me? Yes, you. Your name should be Elephant. They fly around and eventually decide they want to go to their old nest inside of a barn, from which they had been run out by a big, scary cat named Blackie. Yeah, that didn't age well. They fly to the barn and sing a bird song, which threw me violently from 2020 all the way back to 2005. I had no idea how repressed the music from this movie was inside my head, but boy howdy, it ain't repressed now. Red and Blue make sure Blackie's asleep, but as soon as all the sparrows let their guard down, a little rat snitch wakes Blackie up and we find out Blackie is an absolute unit. He chases the birds around and catches one of the girl sparrows and Willie saves her. The other sparrows all fly away, abandoning Willie. Also this entire time, Sissy has been following them around, but that doesn't really matter. She has the hots for Blackie. Oh, just you wait, little sparrows. We'll meet again. Excuse me? What? You don't have to worry about that particular sparrow. I'll take care of him. Uh, oh, excuse me, madam, for being so abrupt. And what is your name? My little sparrow hunter, hmm? <laughs> I'm Sissy. I can see you've had an interesting run-in with that new little sparrow. I, too, have a score to settle with him. Perhaps we could work together. I'm always interested in what a lovely lady has to say. Perhaps we can talk over a saucer of milk? Join me in the humble lodgings of a noble sportsman. Certainly, but just for a moment. Willie flies back to Seeper's nest, where he finds a very pissed off Seeper tearing all of his books up. When Willie asks him what's wrong, Seeper says he's upset with Willie for not telling him about the elixir of knowledge. Willie is as confused as we are and tells Seeper there is no such thing, but Seeper doesn't believe Willie, kicks him out, and goes to get the elixir of knowledge from his new friends. Willie follows Seeper to find out what he's talking about, and Seeper flies to a bar where the movie turns from an anti gun PSA to an anti drinking PSA. A bar? That's a bad place! There's nothing smart in there! 
We find out that the elixir of knowledge is just alcohol and not Dr. Pepper. Seeper meets up with two stoned rats who tell him that alcohol is in fact the elixir of knowledge. The teacher rat tells them to drink and says the teacher will learn with the students. And I, Otto, will be your instructor. Of course, the instructor will also be learning with the students. <laughs> Prime comedy, in my opinion. But what do these rats have to gain from getting super wasted? And how come as a kid I was always told people would be offering me free drugs and alcohol, like in this movie, but as an adult it still hasn't happened yet? Also a funny story, when I watched this, I didn't understand that it was wine or beer, so it always looked absolutely delicious to me. So now that Seeper has been properly wasted, Willie has to get him back to the nest. And just as quickly as it turned into an anti-drinking PSA, it turned into a don't drink and fly PSA. Willie gets Seeper home and Seeper is still upset at Willie for disobeying him. But I mean like, geez, he's only in the fifth grade and he was your designated flyer. Why are you still so pissed? So Willie leaves and one of the thirsty girl sparrows finds him and tells him that Red is pissed at Willie thinking that he snitched on them to Blackie. They take shelter for the night from the storm that appeared and in the morning Willie goes to Red to fight out their problems. I've been waiting for you Willie since late last night. That's what she said. <laughs> The two get into a scuffle, and Willie decks Red, making him the new leader of the Sparrow Gang. At this point, Sparina is finally caught up to Willie and wants to spray him back to being a human again. But the other Sparrows convince Willie to help him win back the barn from Blackie, instead of getting sprayed and becoming a human again. Which is just the dumbest thing I think Willie could have done. Like. Why couldn't he be a human and fight Blackie? Either way, they go back to the barn, running away from Sparina, and wrap Blackie up in a blanket and celebrate. Now, I know there is a lot of unsensible builds up to this climax, and I bet you're wondering, is that it? No, it is not. Sissy the cat unties Blackie, and they completely destroy all of the sparrows. It's total slaughter for the little birds. Willie gets whacked out of the air, and it looks like it's game over. But just as Blackie is about to eat him, Seeper comes to the rescue, and together they wreck him. Or at least they try to wreck him, because Blackie is about to win again. And just at the last moment, again, Sparina comes to the rescue and beats him with a broom, finally raiding the barn of Blackie. Sparina tells Willie he needs to get sprayed. I can't believe I just wrote that. By the magical hairspray. But Willie refuses to get sprayed unless Seeper can get turned into a human too? Which is like noble and everything, but Willie, he was an absolute jerk to you. You don't owe him anything, dude. Okay, so we're almost done. Just follow me with this last part. Sparina can't upset the balance of sparrows to people. So in order to make room for Seeper, she gives up her position as sparrow guardian to Willie in order to make room in the world for Seeper to become a human? I don't understand it either. Wait, hold on. If she wasn't able to upset the balance between humans and sparrows, how was she even able to turn Willie into a sparrow? Wasn't the main reason she left Willie in the first place to get more spray? Why would she only get enough spray for one more spritz? Is turning humans into sparrows such a common occurrence she ran out within the time she found Willie again? She's just not up on this new technology. Oh, okay. Wait. Well, the plot doesn't care, so we shouldn't either. So they both become human, and Sparina and Seeper leave Willy with an empty bottle of magical spray in the middle of nowhere, unattended by an adult. This kid is like 10 years old in the middle of nowhere. If I was in the same position as a 10-year-old, I'd be wondering when I'd be waking up from this acid trip. Oh, also, bird CPR. And the movie ends with another one of those songs that throws me oh so violently back to when I was a fetus. So, that was the movie, folks. Does the plot still hold up? Absolutely not. Do I still love it? Absolutely. I am a big fan of nonsensical things, and this definitely falls into that category. I think the film is still beautiful with its animation, and I would still watch it to this day, even if it is a cluster heck of PSAs for gun violence, drinking, and flying. I've been waiting for you, Willie, since late last night. This is my outro. Be happy.
I just wasted some time of your life. <laughs>